Hello and welcome. You're with the news today. Your prime time destination, the show that asks the questions that no other prime time network does. The rural urban divide in the battle for 2024 is that the X factor. Is income inequality a central election issue now? We'll be raising that question tonight with ground reports. In a moment, the nine headlines at nine first. The curtains come down on the final day of campaigning for Lok Sabha phase two polls. Voting for 98 seats across 89 seats across 13 states will be held on 26th April. Inheritance tax debate erupts over Congress's Sam Pitroda's remarks. Prime Minister Modi claims Congress will snatch away the people's wealth. Congress distances itself from Pitroda, says Prime Minister, diverting attention from real issues. Political fight over Congress manifesto continues after Rahul Gandhi once again accuses the Prime Minister of creating wealth, wealth inequality in India. Modi hits back, says Congress will loot the public. It's official now. Samajwadi Party leader Akhilesh Yadav will contest from Uttar Pradesh's Kanauj. He will file his nomination tomorrow, taking on the BJP Subrat Patak. He becomes the first major non-Congress India Alliance leader to contest the elections. Clean chit for Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar's wife Sunetra who is taking on Supriya Sule in Baramati. Mumbai police clears the NCP candidate in an alleged 25,000 crore cooperative bank scam. The Congress says this is washing machine politics. Supreme Court reserves order in the electronic voting machine VVPAT case. Top court tells petitioners it cannot control elections, says commission has cleared the doubts. NGOs move Supreme Court over electoral bonds issues, file a petition to investigate alleged quid pro quo between corporations and political parties. Outrage continues over Hubli campus stabbing in Karnataka. Students hit the street demanding justice for the victim. CID takes accused Fayaz into six-day custody. An RBI acts against Kotak Mahindra Bank, bans it from onboarding new customers via online and mobile banking directs the bank to stop issuing fresh credit cards. But our top story tonight, it's not the usual story that you will find on primetime news TV. In election season, it's not the usual BJP versus opposition name calling and finger pointing. No, it's not pitting Hindu versus Muslim. It's not being economical over truth with truth over manifestos. As you can see in those visuals, it's something more basic in two of the states that will go to polls in 48 hours. In Karnataka, several districts are drought hit at the moment. In Maharashtra too, several districts are facing a potential drought. As a result, something more basic is affecting millions of Indians outside the gaze of TV studios. And that's called water. It's a five-letter word, water. At the onset of summer, large parts of the country facing this problem, shortage of drinking water. Agrarian distress is a real concern. I traveled just 50 kilometers outside Baramati town in western Maharashtra this week, where villagers are relying on tankers to get water just once a week. A Get Real India story begins our bulletin today. It's a story that needs urgent attention from our vote-seeking leaders. Agrarian distress is an X factor in the 2024 elections. First, my report on what I saw in rural Baramati. राजकारण केलं जातं प्रत्येक माणसाला तोंड ओळखून पाणी दिलं जातं जे राजकारणी लोक आहेत ते त्यांच्या जवळचे लोक आहेत त्यांना पाणी भरपूर दिलं जातं आणि जे लोक जरा म्हणजे गरीब सर्वसामान्य माणसं आहेत त्यांना पाणी व्यवस्थित दिलं जात नाही समजा राजकारणाची जवळची माणसं असतील त्याला घरपोच पाणी मिळणार आता आमचे वेळेला तिकडे पलीकडे भरले तर बाकीच्या लोकांचे 
प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी हलूह हो मोदी बोलता पांच वर्ष पास पानी देते पानी देते अजुन कस नहीं आम गावाला पानी तुम्हाला कोणावर विश्वास आहे मोदींवर विश्वास आहे शरद पवारांवर विश्वास आहे फडणवीस वर विश्वास आहे अजित पवारांवर कारण का आम्हाला पाणीच नाही म्हणून आम्ही फक्त बोलतात मतदान आलं तेवढ्या पुरते हात जोडतात नंतर जातात मग आम्ही देतो मत आम्हाला मोदीची गॅरंटी आहे द्या ना आम्हाला गॅरंटी दाखवा तर आम्ही हसत त्यांना वोट करणार जर जर पाणी दिलं तर हा पाणी पाहिजे पहिले आम्हाला आमचे सॉल्व्ह करा पहिले पाणी मग गॅरंटी अच्छा एक मला सांगा पाण्याचा प्रॉब्लेम किती दिवसापासून आहे पाच महिने झाले पाण्याचा प्रॉब्लेम आहे परंतु एक महिना झाला आता टँकरनी पाणी देतात दोन दोन बॅलर अरे पण ना नाही पण एक सांगा नरेंद्र मोदीजींनी सांगितलं गॅरंटी देतोय की आम्ही प्रत्येक घरात पाणी देऊ तुम्हाला विश्वास आहे की नाही विश्वास आहे देतील ना मोदींवर विश्वास की शरद पवारांवर विश्वास देतील आणि शरद पवार आता आता आतापर्यंत तर अशी अवस्था झाली मग आता इथून पुढे देतील का नाही पण त्यांनाच मतदान देत असतो कोणाला पवारांना पवारांना देत असतो आतापर्यंत लहानपणापासून कधी लोकसभा आणि विधानसभा त्यांना सोडून मतदानच नाही दिलं पण आता असं मनात यायला लागलं की देऊन काहीच फायदा नाही मग कोणा देणार असं वाटतं नो ऑप्शन करावं नो ऑप्शन मनात मनच होत नाही इलेक्शन मतदान करायचं तुम्हाला मोदींवर पण विश्वास नाहीये मोदी म्हणतात माझी गॅरंटी आहे नाही मग आता दादा आहेत ना मोदींचे आता हा दादा अजित दादा दादांना दिला देणार मग असं होणार ते कारण मोदींचे आहेत ना मोदींचे आता काय काय होईना गरिबांसाठी करतात म्हणून त्यांना काय काय केलं तुमच्यासाठी मोदींनी मोदींनी आता आतापर्यंत कुपनाचा गहू कधी गरिबांना खायासारखा मिळतच नव्हता ते आता चार चार पाच महिने निदान गहू असा मिळतोय की ती निदान खाल्ला जातोय पोटामध्ये जातो आता निदान खायला मिळतो गहू नाही तर गरिबाला कधी गहू मिळतच नव्हता खायला सर्वात मोठा प्रॉब्लेम काय आहे तुमच्यासमोर आता आता पा, पाण्याचा 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 तुमच्या खेतीत काय करता काय नाही आता पाऊस नाही म्हणलं काहीच नाही आता जळून गेले सगळं पिण्यासाठीच पाणी नाही शेतीला काय देणार आहे किती महिन्यापासून असं आहे आता हे वर्ष वर्ष झालं पूर्ण वर्ष झालं असं पण कोण आलंय की नाही आणि भेटायला कोण नेते जात नाही काय नाही सरपंच कोण सरपंच आपले स्थानिकच येत काय करायचं सरपंच तरी ते काय म्हणाले काय नाही आणि आणि जे पार्टी बीजेपी शिवसेना एनसीपी येतात की येतात राष्ट्रवादी येतात पण काय म्हणतात काहीच बोलत नाही इलेक्शन चालू झाल्यापासून पाण्याचं बोलतच नाही आता आलत की आता गच्चीप काय बोलणे अच्छा तिथे दिल्लीत आम्हाला सांगतात मोदीची गॅरंटी इथे बारामतीत अजित पवारांची गॅरंटी शरद पवार शरद पवारांची गॅरंटी कोणाच्या गॅरंटीवर तुम्हाला विश्वास आहे आता गॅरंटीच राहिला विश्वासच राहिला नाही विश्वास नाही राहिला सध्या काय झाले माहितीये का कुठल्याच पक्ष विश्वासच नाही इलेक्शन आता इलेक्शन आलंय इलेक्शन नंतर तुम्हाला वाटतं की काय बदलेल की इलेक्शन काय बदलत नाही पन्नास वर्षात बदललं नाही किती वर्षात साहेब पन्नास वर्षात आता हितन पुढे काय बदलणार आहे नाही प्रधानमंत्री म्हणतात आता हर घर नल मे जल प्रधानमंत्री म्हणजे एकदम सरकार लबाड लबाड सरकार आहे एकदम पाणी येत की नाही पाणी नाही येत टँकर साठी किती पैसे द्यावे लागतात पण आठवड्यात किती वेळ येत एकदा दोनशे लिटर बस त्याच्याने काम चालतं का तुमचं नाही चालत आंघोळ चार दिवस करत नाही हे लोक सगळे नेते येतात ते गावात तुम्ही वोट देणार की नाही वोट देवाच लागेल कोणाला देणार पवार साहेबांना तुम्ही रागवलाय मला वाटत रागवलाय म्हणजे काय पवार साहेब आमच्यासाठी काय करत नाही तू तरी बी काय करत नाही मग मग त्यांना मत का देत आहे मत टाकूच व्हायचं अच्छा मत दाखवायचंय नरेंद्र मोदी प्रधानमंत्री त्यांच्यावर तुमचा विश्वास नाही मोदी विश्वास नाही 
मोदी पर विश्वास नहीं दा वर्षा पास प्रधानमंत्री What the lady said at the end was that she hadn't bathed for four days because there was no water. I was there with my colleague Sahil Joshi in an area which is a VVIP constituency. Remember Sharad Pawar and the Pawar family have controlled Baramati for decades but this was just outside the city. And there is a water emergency in large parts of the country. I had reported a similar story from Bengaluru in Karnataka on elections on my plate last week. I want to raise the question, therefore, is there a rural-urban divide and is that an X factor in this 2024 elections? Who better to answer that than someone who has been studying the agrarian crisis for years? I spoke a short while ago to P. Sainath, Max Sese Award winner. And joining me now is India's chronicler of uh, rural affairs, uh, Max Sese Award winning journalist uh, P. Sainath is with me. Appreciate you're joining us, Sainath. Uh, if I were to turn back the clock to even 15, 20 years ago, Sainath, I recall your searing pieces on the water tanker mafias of Maharashtra. And now we are seeing both in Karnataka and Maharashtra, large parts are drought hit. Water tankers are uh, providing water once in every eight days. Has nothing really changed on the ground? And why is it not resonating at election time? I think it's changed a lot for the worse, Rajdeep. And the drought that you've been witnessing in your travels in Maharashtra and Karnataka, those droughts are not just meteorological droughts. Okay, They are closely linked to and spring from severe inequalities in the distribution of water. We need to confront them as essentially issues of justice plus as you say, no one's taking note. I think one of the frightening things is we are not taking note of climate change at all in terms of what it means for water, what it means for farming. There are very huge inequalities in both. And India is, as you know, after in these last few years, we have emerged clearly as the front runner in nations of the world with multiple inequalities. So yes, the farming crisis is deepening Yes, the policy makers are not are in fact dismissing, mm -hmm. explicitly dismissing the problems of inequality. Just when you when you say inequality in water distribution, give us a sense, give our viewers a sense of just how deep this inequality is in water distribution. As I said, when I went to a village fifty kilometers outside Baramati, uh, they are getting water once in every eight days, once in every seven days from a tanker. They pay 200 rupees for a large drum, 60 rupees for a small one. Uh, in Bengaluru, uh, in rural Bengaluru itself, people were lining up for water. So how deep is this inequality? It's incredibly deep because if you just went, the very places you went, within the city, you look at the per capita availability. In, in, in Mumbai, you can look at it in the slums and you can look at it in Kaf Parade or Malabar Hill you're seeing a per capita difference in availability of hundreds of liters in a day. Second, Rajdeep, in your home state and in your city of Mumbai, you know that we get most of our water. I live in a place where I get 24 hours water. Most of our water comes from the five or six Tulsi, Vaitarna, lakes of Thani from Adivasi areas, Palgar, Thani. If you look at those areas themselves, as I know you have, you can, it's very hard for you to find an Adivasi household that has spiked water. But their water serves us 24 hours a day in, in, in uh, the cities. And it's like that in every city. Uh, a, a few years ago, the Times of India did an RTI. Uh, the journalist was, I think, Priyanka Kakodkar, which showed us that in Maharashtra, the towns get 400 percent more water than the villages from where the rivers originate mm -hmm. so, so that's so, that so why is this why is this not becoming an election issue why is it that people don't seem to to want to vote on 
who will provide us water now the prime minister himself has said har ghar uh, 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 jal nal program of the uh, 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 prime minister you've got the congress party which has ruled this country for years which has claimed that it will ensure that every household has pipe water why is this still a pipe dream for many well in, in fact you have seen yourself what those uh, statements and promote promises mean on the ground you have just returned from trips looking at that i am trying to say actually that it's part of the package of incredible inequalities that india has you know multiplied many times over in the last 30 years but primarily fastest in the last 10 now just look at two things to look at look at a few numbers that water inequality is part of many inequalities not just rural urban gaps intra rural intra urban gender inequalities inequalities in income and wealth social inequalities yet you have the chairman of the finance 16th finance commission writing with a headline in the times of india a piece that says don't lose sleep over inequality it really means nothing and the masses don't care about it themselves that's essentially what he has written on april 2 in the times of india you have the chief economic advisor to mr modi and that is quite a post i mean the chief advisor to the vishwa guru it's quite something and yet he says they um, the it's not really the business of government to provide employment you know it's not really that in the noble world in his words mm-hmm. jobs are given out by uh, are, are to be provided by the commercial sector by which he means the private sector now neither of these guys appears to have read that document which you and i call the constitution of india what it says about these inequalities what it says about how to do it about how to what the that the state shall provide a social order in which justice social economic and political shall inform all institutions of national life that the state shall strive to minimize inequalities in income and endeavor to eliminate inequalities in status facilities just let me give you one number rajdi india today has 200 billionaires in the latest forbes list in 19 in 1991 you had zero 200 billionaires account for a net asset worth of 954 billion dollars that's about depending on whether you're which way you're cutting your gdp that's about 20 that's between a fifth and a fourth of your gross domestic product it means 200 individuals or 0.000014% of your population have wealth equal, equivalent to one fourth or one fifth of your GDP. That's inequality. You need to lose sleep over it. But your top officials, chief economic advisor, and uh, you know the chairman of the 16th Finance Commission, think this is all nonsense. But the fact is, rural distress, as I said, is acute in several parts of the country. Do you see it falling incomes post COVID in some of these parts? I've met uh, agriculturists who told me their costs of inputs have increased. How do you see it play out? We see anger both against state governments and against center. Uh, yeah, there's a sense that the, that many of the farmers and those uh, at the margins of rural society uh, just seem helpless almost. There, there seems to be cynicism. The people I met said, you know, the Netas come to us once in every five years seeking votes. Where has yeah. the system gone wrong? Yeah. Rajdeep, it went wrong from the way the day we started violating the Constitution injunctions and the directive principles of state policy, consciously and celebrating inequality. Now, when you're talking about the farmers, remember that there was a promise in 2017 to double their income in five years. At the end of the five years, the government's own figures show that if you, you know, if you divide the income of farmers into income from agricultural income, cultivation, from wage labor, from livestock, instead of doubling the income, the income of the farmer from cultivation has actually fallen when you were supposed to double it. 
Remember that in 2014, Mr. Modi said he would provide one crore, 10 million jobs to rural youth. Why would they not be distressed when you've done nothing of the sort? And three, you also promised in 2014 to implement the main recommendations of the Swaminathan Commission. I don't agree, Rajdeep, that people are not uh, are, are indifferent to what's happening. Remember that you saw the world's largest, the world's largest protest and movement for justice lasting 53 weeks at the gates of Delhi. Yeah. And against the unjust farm laws, which are now simply being introduced from the back door in a number of methods. You're going to, you know, you're going to see rural distress up further. And also it's going to merge with some of the things, the terrible things that are happening in climate. So would you see going ahead, do you believe that this is where any government, whoever is elected on the 4th of June, needs to reshift priorities, needs to see what are you going to do to actually double farm income? What are you actually going to do to make our farms more productive? What are you going to do to ensure that youth actually find farming lucrative or at least find other uh, uh, ways in which they can uh, be able to make a living in rural India? Is that, according to you, a challenge which any government needs to really debate upon? You're, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what they need to do. And also remember, apart from farmers, what about workers? I'm saying there are many things that can be done, Rajdeep. For instance, you have to increase the number of work days on the, in the rural areas from 100 to 200 work days under the MGNREGA without create, add an existing to the existing provision of 100 days without creating digital hurdles that simply keep people away or don't give them payments on time. So it, it is the business of government. You know, despite what your chief economic advisor says, that we should, government should not be really concerned with the major provision of employment now on. It is the business of the government to provide equitable access to land, water, land rights of women farmers, Dalit farmers, Adivasi farmers. You, there are all the possible routes that you can, that you can look at that you can implement. And I think that it should start with a special session of parliament on the rural crisis, on the agrarian crisis and related issues. I think that's a very important part, point. Whoever comes to power should be willing to have a special session to deal with the agrarian crisis that still exists in this country. P. Sainal. For putting all of this in some kind of context for our viewers, as always, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, while that issue of agrarian crisis will rarely be debated in the campaigning of our Lok Sabha elections, phase two of that is over. Remember, voting for 88 seats across 13 states will be held on Friday. This round of campaigning has seen the BJP led by the Prime, Prime Minister ramp up their poll pitch, particularly targeting the Congress's Wealth Survey Manifesto promise, claiming that this will lead to redistribution of wealth. The Prime Minister even claiming that the wealth will eventually go to the minority community. The opposition, remember, has labelled it as a hate speech. But have real issues got lost as we approach the second round of this seven-round election marathon? Take a look. Campaign ends for phase two of the Lok Sabha elections. A spell that saw more googlies than line and length deliveries. A manifesto that made headlines not for what it said, but for its explanation by Rahul Gandhi. देश का एक्सरे कर देंगे, दूध का दूध, पानी का पानी हो जाएगा, और इस ऐतिहासिक कदम के बाद हम क्रांतिकारी काम शुरू करेंगे। An explanation that was interpreted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi this way। पहले जब उनकी सरकार थी, उन्होंने कहा था कि देश की संपत्ति पर पहला अधिकार मुसलमानों का। इसका मतलब ये संपत्ति इकट्ठी करके किसको बांटेंगे? जिनके ज़्यादा बच्चे हैं उनको बांटेंगे, गुस्पेट्सों को बांटेंगे। 
Congress formula to end inequality will bring taxmen inside your homes, warned Modi. Our mothers and sisters who have three days, who have the Mangal Sutra, who will survey it. The Anti-Tax Act An emotional pitch that got an emotional counter. Indra Gandhi ne apna sona jab jang hui thi apna sona desh ko diya. Meri ma ka Mangal Sutra is desh ko kurban hua hai. Rahul Gandhi's top agenda, caste census, has become a talking point. The 22 logo ko unhone 16 lakh crore rupee transfer kiya. Thoda sa paisa. ज़्यादा नहीं, थोड़ा सा पैसा कांग्रेस पार्टी का मैनिफेस्टो वापस 90 परसेंट को देने जा रही है, थोड़ा सा। The Congress delivered a full toss in the last over that came all the way from the United States. Let me tell you, in America, there is an inheritance tax. One has 100 million dollar worth of wealth, and when he dies, he can only transfer probably 45 percent to his children. 55% is grabbed by government. Congress ka mantra hai, Congress ki loot, jindiki ke saadh bhi loot, aur jindiki ke baad bhi loot. Nowhere does it talk about wealth redistribution. Nowhere does it talk about taking away anybody's gold and snatching the Mangal Sutras of women. This is such preposterous attacks that we are seeing from BJP. While alleged hate speech and inequality shaped the discourse, job creation, price rise all got lost in the din during the campaign for second phase. Bureau Report, India Today. So let's raise the big questions then. Income inequality, is this slowly becoming a central election issue across parties? Is the inheritance tax debate a distraction from that? Has Sam Petroda embarrassed the Congress with his comments. Should the super rich be actually taxed even more in this country? Sayyid Zafar Islam, the BJP's evergreen spokesperson with us, Madhu Yakshikau, the Congress's spokesperson, and Rahul Varma, fellow at the Center for Policy Research with us. Thanks very much to all of you. First to you, Sayyid Zafar Islam. Is income inequality now a central issue? The way the Congress has pitched it, calling for a socio-economic caste census, a wealth survey. Do you see this as Put pitching income inequality at the center of this election debate and where does the BJP stand? Well, Rajdeep, you have to understand the mindset of Congress party and its leaders. The man who was the architect of this manifesto has exposed the Congress party itself. You know, if you just do a back testing, you will realize in 1975, Congress party at that, that time during emergency put many leaders behind the jail, behind the bar, and put them in the jail, but they didn't stop there. They also taken away the wealth and the properties and many other things, uh, uh, belongings of those uh, people who have been jailed, primarily because that is what their intention was. And to, even today, record doesn't su suggest anything which has, been gone, which has gone to the government treasury. This time, in the manifesto itself, it was written very clearly, they will snatch the wealth of a common man on the street. No, no, where is and it written? No, no, one minute, one minute, one minute. About you it. see, you must, you must, you know, There's, you have made a statement which I have to fact check. You are saying the Congress manifesto has said they will seize the wealth of the rich. Please show me. I have the manifesto with me. Where I is think, it said? Where is uh, the word? No, no, you must, you must be factually correct, I, I sir. Think, Let's not uh, mislead uh, uh, audiences. Uh, uh, allow, you, One thing you, you say, allow me, allow, you, you, allow, you are making a false statement, uh, I, which I, you should uh, correct. Uh, uh, I think, uh, Rajdeep, you have taken, you are behaving as if you are the Rahul Gandhi's spokesperson. I am not Trust the, me, I am the spokesperson of the viewers. Absolutely clear you, will not, you will not. No, no, let, you let me will allow, not allow me to, to complete. Viewers, sir. Do uh, not lie. I am telling you that whatever. The, 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 no, no, I am not lying. The context in which the, every, anything is written about the health survey mm -hmm. has been explained by none other than Rahul Gandhi and Sam Pitoda. Now it is everything is clear that what was the true intention of Congress party. Okay. They will snatch the wealth of 
every single uh, uh, citizen of this country, be it rich, poor, middle class, everyone. If we are poor sir, section I of the society, they have, where, sir, they can you have show me where it is in the they, manifesto, uh, sir? Really, sir, they I asked also, you where is it in the they, manifesto. That's all I asked you, sir. Where uh, is it in the manifesto? Ra Rajdeep, can you Rajdeep, read it out to me? Rajdeep, Rajdeep, you should, uh, Rajdeep, you should ask the Congress spokesperson what they are what their leader Rahul Gandhi has spoken out in public. You should not defend him. Okay. When he has spoken, how do you understand their intent? Okay. Whatever is written has been elaborated by Rahul Gandhi himself. Okay. And when he, when the Honorable Prime Minister criticized them, then what did they do? They initially, they initially said that we didn't mean it. But Sam Petroda yesterday may actually expose them. This is what they meant. Okay, can I? They first of all, first, sir, I get your point. Sir, I get your point. They, they are planning in 2024. Sir, sir, one minute. Sir, just to give our viewers a bit of background, uh, the estate tax existed in this country till 1985, was removed by Rajiv Gandhi. In 1989, 1998 and 99, the BJP manifesto had referred to it. But more importantly, sir, you've seen over the years, we've seen... Uh, uh, both the Congress and the BJP in the last 10 years, during P. Chidambaram's time, as well as Arun Jaitley's time, various leaders referring to the possibility of bringing in some kind of an inherent tax. But please respond to what you are hearing, Mr. Madhu Yakshikaut, because Rahul Gandhi has complicated your position. When he speaks of revolutionary steps that are going to be taken to, dist uh, to ensure equality of wealth without giving any specifics, he leaves open the charge that he plans to redistribute wealth. Mr. Rahul Gandhi must make it very clear. How is he going to remove income inequalities? Without that clarity, the BJP has every right to say Rahul Gandhi plans to snatch away your wealth as uh, uh, Mr. Sayyid Zafar Islam says. You've opened the floodgates for the BJP and then Sam Petroda embarrasses you more. Tazdeep, this Mr. Zafar Islam, he should change his name. Islam doesn't teach, speak lies. He's quoting about Congress manifesto, which doesn't say, never says. No, let's talk about Rahul Gandhi. The, the Congress manifesto does not speak it. about redistribution of wealth. Yeah, but I'm Rahul, coming, Gandhi, I'm coming to Rahul you. Gandhi alludes to it. I want your answer. I'm coming what to is that. this revolutionary step again, of Rahul Gandhi? I'm coming to that. Yes. I'm coming to that, Rajdeep. What Mr. Gandhi is mentioning about 90% of the people. The 90% of the people belong to SC, ST, BC minority. Where is the wealth? They are paying GST tax, paying road tax to inflation, to price rise. All that money is collected and given 16 lakhs crores being waived off for 21 corporate people. What Mr. Gandhi said is, he is not against waiving off the corporate whatever benefit they are getting. What about those farmers' loans to be waived off? What about the students' loans to be waived off? What about the woman should get in a one lakh rupees a month if a woman is empowered, unemployed? The whole family will get benefited. So what Mr. Gandhi said is, if you 16 lakhs crores you have distributed to those 21 people, mm -hmm. and if the half of that money can be distributed, 25 times you can wave off the farmers' loans. Yeah, yeah. No, one, one minute, Mr. Zafar Islam. One of minute, sir. Madhu, no, no, sir. Zafar Islam did not, not getting, intervene. They are Madhu not Yaksha getting Gaud. any benefits. No, no, sir. So the Madhu wealth, wealth has to be equally distributed. Sir, Mr. Yakshi Gaud, when Rahul Gandhi says there will be an X-ray done, he yes. used the word X-ray. There will be an X-ray done of everyone. Yes. And then based on that, the census Correct. is like an X-ray. Based on that, we will take revolutionary steps. As I maintain, once you say that, you give rise to the suspicion that the Congress would like something to be done, which will ensure that the wealth which is there with a few individuals is then spread equally. That's how the BJP is interpreting it. What Gandhi mentioned is that he keeps talking about X-ray. Mm -hmm. X-ray is to find out the problem where it is where the wealth is. So far, that's not been counted. I am paying GST, you are paying GST, but all that money, why only Ambani or few business houses are getting benefited? So that when he talked about X-ray, when he talked about Mr. Modi claims to be an OBC leader, when OBCs have 50% of the population belong to an OBC community, 
and what are they getting benefited from the wealth which they are creating. The creator of the wealth is getting nothing mm -hmm. and the people who few business families are getting all the benefits. So what he meant is these 90% of the population, if the texture has done where the problem, where it is, and if wealth is why it's not distributed equally. And we used to have this student scholarship being stopped, the benefits, no farmer loan being waived off, no, no waiver off to the poorest of the poor of the families. But why is waving off those 16 lakh crores to those few business companies? Okay, this is the second time you so mentioned that. This is the, the second wealth. or what third, sir. What just a minute, sir. An healthy democracy can equal distribution of the wealth. Uh, sir, and you mentioned one last this for point. three times. Sam Pitroda never said it that we're going to wealth tax. No, Sam Pitroda yeah. said there is a system in the US. Just a minute, sir. Varadji, Varadji, sir, sir, let's not have cross talk. One minute. Sam Pitroda said that there is a system of inheritance tax in the US. He says, why can't a similar, this is an issue worth looking at. He's not saying it will be brought in India. But three times in his intervention, Madhu Yaksha Gaut, Sayyid Zafar Islam says that the BJP has waived uh, corporate tax or given corporate tax benefits to uh, the affluent, the indu to industry. Where are the benefits it is giving to the farmers, to the poor, to the OBCs, SCSTs that are commensurate? That's the point he's trying to make again and again. Your response, sir. Uh, uh, Rajdeep, I will respond to your question. No, what I'm trying Later, to say. First, no, sir, please wait. Me. Asking me. One thing. Please wait, wait, Mr. Gaud. Please. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, Ms. Mr. Sam Petroda did an X-ray of Rahul Gandhi's brain and heart. And it is now diagnosed very clearly that his mindset and his hidden agenda was very clear to snatch the wealth of common man, the poorer section of the society, the middle class of the society. Now let me add that today, the Sam Pedroda's X-ray gives us a killer, killer picture. Everything has is now out in open. Sir, but Sam Pedroda is not even a member of the Rahul Congress Gandhi. Manifesto now Committee. Let me respond to are no. you saying Sam Pitroda is the voice of Rahul Gandhi? Is Absolutely. that what you're saying? He is the, he, neither is. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who? No. Uh, you have shown his picture with him I, every now and then on the screen. You, you, let me be, don't interrupt me. Let me let me respond. So, yeah, yeah. Madhu Yaks is not complete. Madhu Yaks, please let Sayyid Zafar Islam complete. Put Madhu Yaks's voice down. Let yes, Sayyid Zafar Islam complete. Please let, let, allow me to complete. Yes. All all I'm trying to do when he says that we have waived off loan. Who says that we have waived off loan? They took all the cut. They gave bad loans. We only categorize them as right down. So that once the recovery is done, it can be written back. And most of the loans which has been written down at that point, at that point in time, has been written back in the balance sheet. It is very unfair to say they left the bank in such a terrible shape Terrible condition. Today it's... it's no, a sir, the point... Condition. No, no, Sayyid Zafar Islam... Sir, Sayyid Zafar... Sir, sir, sir. Sir, the no, point... Me, sir, me, just a minute, me, sir. Sayyid Zafar Islam, you must listen to the question. Uh, 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 this, uh, according to the Congress, the BJP government gave a first. corporate tax break to corporates three years ago. However, they have not given similar breaks to those who live on the margins. This is the charge they are making. And that's according to uh, Madhu Yaksha Gaud, what the Congress no. intends... To course correct. Not at all. So the fact that in, in, in any economy, when you have left in an economy 2004 to 2014, in the same state, except the situation, the condition of the economy was strong. At 11th position, condition of the economy was so fragile. At 11th position in 2014, you have to do something to bring that momentum in the economy. They call, create more economic activities. That's why you have to incentivize corporate and that has been done to create more white collar and black, blue collar jobs. Having said that, who has provided the, all the uh, ease of living to common men on the street? It is the Bharatiya Janata Party under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister who is worried about the roof, those who have no roof, worried about the, who has provided gas connection, who has provided electricity connection, who has provided water connection, who has given free ration, who has given better roads, who has given better infrastructure, who is creating world-class infrastructure for whom? Who has given better road 
and uh, world class uh, train sir you may have uh, seen the story i done sir is, sir you may have just seen the story living. sir just a minute no, I have taken your point. Mr. He is of living for the common okay. man. Sir, as he you have seen, sir, one what minute. Done, Please put his voice down. Also... As you have seen, sir, I have just done a story from rural Maharashtra. In a relatively better off part of Maharashtra, 50 kilometers from Baramati, people are getting water once in eight days. In Karnataka, no different. One is Congress rule, one is BJP rule. The fact is there are serious issues on the ground that often politicians don't seem to recognize. Rahul Varma, you are seeing how this inequality debate is playing out. Is this now shaping the 2024 campaign agenda? Rahul Gandhi making it clear there will be a wealth survey, x-ray, and we will, uh, without saying redistribute wealth, saying we will have revolutionary steps. The BJP saying Rahul Gandhi will snatch away the wealth of the rich. How do you respond? Is this an election so, issue? Uh, thank you, Rajdeep, for this question. I think what seems to be happening, uh, uh, one, with the kind of uh, speeches and statements made by Congress politician. And then in retort uh, by first the prime minister, and then I think that became a cue for most of BJP politicians where they have uh, uh, taken up this idea of redistribution and uh, put a uh, sort of like Hindu-Muslim angle to that. Uh, so that is going to now uh, be the pitch of uh, this 2024 campaign, at least uh, to energize the base of both parties. In some ways, what Congress party is now, even if it's not part of their manifesto, but the kind of statements that came up, uh, uh, you know, there is a difference between what is written and what is being said. And I don't think uh, uh, they understand uh, the uh, extent of, of uh, uh, like meaning that is going to be drawn from uh, things they are uh, things that Congress politicians, and especially Rahul Gandhi and people who are close to him, are saying. See, to me, Rajdeep, and I've said this on your show many times that there are serious issues in our economy. And these issues were not created in five years, 10 years, but these are structural problems of our economy. We are a poor country with a very large population, uh, with a very, very uh, 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 large uh, population in the working age who is not able to find significant employment. Inequality is rising, and it cannot be solved in, in, in a five-year time with by any government. And so what I, as a citizen of this country, uh, who does not understand uh, the numbers on economy as some of, uh, some of other people on your panel uh, do, uh, might understand, we have a serious problem on, 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 on income and economic inequality. What seems to be happening that for 15% of our population, uh, the GDP growth rate is very, very high. But for a vast majority, which is more than half, uh, the GDP growth might be just around 4 and 5%. And this income inequality gap cannot be solved in a five-year by just policy. But is, uh, it, an ele policy is it an election issue? Is it an election issue, therefore? Could it determine voter preferences? The Congress party definitely wants to now, in some ways, play on this economic angle. Uh, and that's why what you have been witnessing, not just in their manifestos, mm -hmm. they are trying to link the income inequality and all kinds of income issues to two things. One, that there is a crony capitalism in the system and top BJP leadership of the government is in cahoots with business. And the second thing is uh, 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 that this income inequality is, is basically uh, is creating all kinds of problems for okay. a large section of the population. And that's where they're bringing the caste angle. We need a caste census to be able to figure out who hasn't got and then there would be plans of uh, but, basically policy formulation. So Congress party is bringing income question, income inequality question from the sort of like corruption and nepo, uh, corruption, and, mm -hmm. not corruption, but crony capitalism and the caste angle. BJP is trying to bring through uh, Hindu Muslim and redistribution uh, uh, angle. So I'm going to ask both of you 30 seconds each. First you Madhi Yakshagod, are you playing with fire? What you are doing is in a time when you want to encourage wealth creation, the Congress will be seen to be anti-wealth creation. You're not in that sense in tune with the aspirations of a new India where everyone wants to move ahead. As you know, you you are seemingly your the way the manifesto is shaped according to some is seen to be anti-wealth creation. That's the perception again because of the statements your leaders make, not so much as what is written in your manifesto. Rajdeep. It's a malicious, misleading statement by BJP doing it. They create a fear among the people. 
what neither manifest nor nowhere it said it. What Rahul Gandhi said it is the equidistribution of the wealth is very important. In the last 10 years, the corporate tax is at 21 percent. You are giving all the benefits to corporates, but not to the middle class. The rich caste has become rich class now. The middle class, salaried people who are paying taxes, if they work 12 months, five months being taken away their income by the Modi government. Okay. And they have not given any benefits to them. So what we are trying to say is in the manifesto, equity distribution of this health. They cannot show any statement which they are making. Sam Petrora just mentioned about wealth. He is the person who created a telecom revolution in the country. He is a great citizen of the country. These people, BJP, this is what they do it. They create fear among the people. So you are saying that are, hate you're among saying the, the BJP is creating it's fear. Human I human want, human. therefore, Sayyid Zafar Islam to have the final word. Sayyid Zafar Islam, it's one thing to have a debate on wealth uh, uh, distribution, income inequality, but when the Prime Minister no less goes and says, look, this wealth will be snatched and given to minorities or given to Guspetia or may bring in Mangal Sutra, your Mangal Sutras will be also sold. What is, isn't that also fear mongering? Aren't you also preying on the worst of people, sir, very quickly? Well, Rajdeep, you have to understand that we are only giving reference, taking reference from what has been spoken by Congress leader, the then Prime Minister, and everything is not in open when Sam Petroda has X-rayed the mindset of Rahul Gandhi and uh, given a, a very st a clear result that this is what they want. So it is our fault what they are saying. We are only taking it to the people that this is what will happen if the Congress comes to power. This is what they will do. They, they will snatch your wealth. They, they will, will not snatch your wealth and give it to minorities. If you they will snatch wealth, your wealth and wealth. give it to minorities. They will take away your Mangal yeah. Sutra. So every, so everything what the, the then Prime Minister has said that it, the, uh, the first right is of the minority, particularly he's referring about uh, 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 Muslims. Sir, he said so SCST, OBC, minorities. Is, is into the I am surprised that treasury. someone like you government, from the minority treasury. community if should also misinterpret what Dr. Singh said. But I'll leave it there. The Congress has given enough space, whether it's a Petroda or others, for the BJP to mis misinterpret it. But it is unfortunate that a serious issue like income inequalities then gets caught in these propaganda battles and fear mongering. I hope that these parties can actually give a solution to income inequalities and more importantly to the water crisis as well that I mentioned earlier in the show. These are the real issues, water crisis, that should be debated by our netas. But I appreciate my guests joining me on my top talking point. Let me turn from there to uh, India Today exclusive. This weekend I was in Baramati. Today, Maharashtra's Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar's wife, Sunetra Pawar, who's the candidate from Baramati, has got a clean chit after the Mumbai police cleared her in an alleged 25,000 crore cooperative bank scam. The opposition is once again saying this is the BJP's washing machine. I caught up with Sunetra Pawar for her first ever interview. Listen in to Ajit Pawar's wife. First attempt at politics. Are you enjoying it? May yes. I am enjoying it. You are saying you are enjoying it, but somewhere else, what is it that for the first time you are fighting in this kind of fight, where the other side is Supriya Tai. It will not be easy to fight in Vaini and Tai. It will not be easy to fight in Vaini and Tai. It will not be easy to fight in Vaini and Tai. But this is what happens. लोगों ने हाथ में ली हुई लड़ाई है क्या मतलब इसका मतलब क्या है क्योंकि मेरी उम्मीदवारी लोगों की मांग थी आपकी उम्मीदवारी लोगों की मांग थी क्योंकि दूसरी तरफ हम सुप्रिया ताई से मिले थे और उन्होंने कहा ये एक तरह से पारिवारिक लड़ाई नहीं है विचारधारा की लड़ाई है क्या राजनीतिक विचारधारा की लड़ाई है तो आप और उनमें कोई ये नहीं है फाइट नहीं है सच बताइए ये तो परिवार टूट गया है ये राजनीतिक विचारों की लड़ाई है रिश्ता अलग है ये राजनीतिक राज राजनीति अलग है हमें 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 ये जानना था कि 40 साल के बाद आपने फैसला लिया कि आपको चुनाव लड़ना है 40 साल तक आप अजीत दारा के साथ में 40 साल से करीब करीब आपकी शादी को हो चुका है 40 साल के बाद आपको ऐसा क्यों लगा कि आपको चुनाव में उतरना 
खुद उम्मीदवार के तौर पर दादा ने जब दादा ने जब ये अलग भूमिका ली और मुझे लगा कि दादा के साथ होना चाहिए और वो मैंने राजनीति में आने का विचार किया जो दादा पर आरोप लगे कई बार उसके 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 बाद आपको लगा नहीं कि राजनीति से मतलब दादा खुद कई बार बोल चुके हैं कि राजनीति से उनका मन उब चुका था आपने देखा कि वो कई बार इमोशनल भी हो चुके थे आपका रिएक्शन उस पर क्या क्या था राजनीति में तो ये तो होता ही रहता है आरोप प्रत्यारोप तो होने ही है तो ये तो चलता ही है राजनीति उसको एक ही कहते हैं ना क्योंकि आज हम शरद पवार जी से भी मिले थे और शरद पवार जी ने कहा कि ये जो निर्णय लिया है ये दबाव में लिया है बीजेपी ने दबाव डाला अजीत पवार पर कि अप, आपकी पत्नी को लड़ाई है ताकि मेरी बेटी हार सके और ईडी का दबाव था ये उनके शब्द है आ, ये तो उनको ही पता होगा और कहीं ना कहीं जब ये इस तरह की बात करते हैं तो क्या आपको लगता है की परिवार आपका जो है वो एक तरह से जैसे मैंने कहा बिल्कुल बिखर गया है सब इस लड़ाई को देख रहे हैं कि एक परिवार जो सबको लगा एक साथ है इतने जल्दी कैसे बिखर गया इतने सालों तक तो ऐसा लगा था शरद पवार जी और अजीत पवार एक साथ है अब अलग अलग पक्ष बन गए इतनी कटुता आ गई इतनी फोर एक दूसरे के खिलाफ इतनी बिटरनेस क्यों है? बिटरनेस है कटुता है या मुझे, या मुझे, मुझे लगता है ये जो है ये राजनीति की लड़ाई है राजनीति अलग है रिश्ता अलग है राजनीति में रिश्ता लाना बुरी बात है मुझे लगता है दुर्दय आप बीच में भावुक हुई थी जब आप कहा गया कि आप बाहर से आई हुई है पवार वर्सेस सुले लड़ाई में आपने हमने देखा कि आपने एक रिएक्शन दिया आप आप काफी भावुक हो गई थी क्या हो गया था जिसके वजह से आपको ऐसा लगा कि ये ये बात सही नहीं है नहीं मुझे इस, इसका आंसर नहीं देना तो कोई दबाव नहीं था कोई दबाव जब आपने ये निर्णय लिया आज इतने दिनों के बाद सोचकर कभी सोचती है ये कहा मैं फंस गई ये राजनीति में भाषण देना पड़ता है इतने लोगों से मिलना पड़ता है कहीं आपको लगता है कि कहीं गलती कर दी नहीं कभी कभी इतिहास एक मोड़ पे ला के रख देता है और हमें उसे फेस करना है Okay, let's turn away to our good news today story as we end the show a young woman from Kodi Kodi in Kerala has defied the challenges of cerebral palsy to achieve a remarkable feat clearing the civil services exam Sarika cleared the exam in her second attempt tonight i leave you with this inspirational story a story that we should celebrate as proud indians thanks for watching stay well stay safe good night shubhratri jai hind namaskar Sarika has secured 922nd rank in the UPSC civil services examination. The 23-year-old Koriko resident cleared the exam in a second attempt, becoming the first candidate with cerebral palsy from Kerala to qualify. Sarika can only move three fingers on her left hand and is unable to use her right. However, she did not let her disability limit her dreams in any way. After completing graduation, I felt uh, I want to become something. I don't. I am not a person to end up my life in this house. So I want to achieve something more uh, because my parents has sacrificed a lot, uh, and I want. I want to give something back to them. Sarika joined free online coaching classes offered to disabled students by an academy. I got selected to uh, Chitta Shilpam project of Absolute IS Academy. Uh, I have I joined in online batch because I was not able to physically present the, the academy. Sarika credits her parents for all her success. Family is my backbone. They are my pillar of strength, and uh, they accompanied me everywhere uh, in the time of interview and also the mains exam. Uh, my father is working abroad in Qatar. Uh, at the time of exam, he will come here for leave, and uh, uh, he, he will accompany me. Uh, so, also in, uh, for interview, also the, I gone with my family. She says that she was inspired by the work of former Kodi Kodi collector Prashant Nair, popular on social media as Collector Bro. She aims to help create opportunities for the disabled once she joins the services. I gave uh, IAS as my first preference. I don't know uh, which uh, service I would get, but uh, if I became an IAS officer, I want to uh, give much more uh, importance to differently able person because they are the uh, ones who are suffering or marginalized persons in society. Sarika is an inspiration to many who dream of joining the civil services. With Shibhi Mohan, KG Bureau Report, India Today.